What do we get better usage of our money with? Paying it to our soldiers that are putting their lives on the line or overpaying for product by 1,000% they can get somebody else negotiate so you can save some money for the company. Look, we have, a, we have an antitrust problem all across America. We've way over-consolidated every industry. You used to have 100 major defense contractors. You're really at five now. That's right. And they really pre- behave like a cartel. And they pay um, almost a brigade's worth of lobbyists, a couple thousand that infect Washington, D.C. Contractor gets charges way too much for product who then pays lobbyists to pay politicians to affect more restrictions on competitors and, uh, and, and really more nonsense. And so it's a very unhealthy cycle. The next president must break up the cartel that is defense contractors, IT, big tech, insurance, banking. There's a, there's a really powerful book I read, um, actually referred by my daughter, it's great when your kids start referring you stuff and educating you. It's called The Myth of Capitalism. I highly encourage your, your audience to read it. And it's by Jake Tepper. And it, it basically makes the case that the problem in America with income, oh, read it. With income yeah. inequality. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Tepper. This is, this is not new. This, came, this is a... Uh, That's three or four years, years old. old. Yeah, six, okay. yeah, I read this book. And it just, we have way over consolidated everything. And man, we saw that loud and clear in the defense space as well. Yeah, there's five of them now, right? General, we've got, we've gone through the process. Boeing, These, Lockheed, Northrop, uh, General Raytheon, Dynamics. And General Dynamics. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and they can, and they're almost one company. When you're five, you're not really five companies. No, you're really because one they, company. they jointly bid That's on right. stuff, and it's it's competition at most. Right. You take this one, I'll take this one. You take that one. It's cool. I'll take the next one. And uh, it, they, they're all bullying the same buyer. It's a cartel. Right. Makes sense. Now, let me ask you this. For somebody uh, uh, that's looking on private versus pr- uh, uh, public, right? If I'm choosing to give you the money, do I want somebody uh, like you to become as powerful as possible where all of a sudden you're saying you have 73 aircraft, 767, you have all these guys. Was there ever a moment where you're sitting there saying to yourself, I can do this better than you guys flow everything through me. Did you ever go through that yourself? No. I mean, it, in some areas, we were, we were definitely better because we could operate with such a smaller footprint. Where were you not better than the U.S. government? Uh, look, we never, we never attempted to, endeavored to do big line formations, divisions, brigades of tanks, and it was not our thing at all. But I would argue that for insurgencies... For um, uh, for those problems, we had a much better model, and we could do it better than the U.S. than the U.S. military. What I wanted, what I really pushed for in 2017, was to get Trump to change tactics in Afghanistan mm-hmm. to prevent the debacle that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, Bannon, Steve Bannon, a friend of mine, um, said, "We're going to debate Afghan policy. Write an op-ed." So I did. I wrote it to the Wall Street Journal, submitted for an audience of one. Trump read it while he was sitting at the Oval Office desk, circled it. He called in the National Security Advisor, who had just asked to send 70,000 more troops to Afghanistan. Trump said, I don't like your, your plan. Do this one. H.R. McMaster, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but he was a three-star armor officer who wanted to be a four-star, and he wasn't going to do anything contrary to the Pentagon. What I advocated was basically a version of what the special operations community had done effectively, which Uh is to train Afghan forces in a way that was cost effective. And you actually live with, train with, and fight with. Put that mentor model with them so that you have, well, it's the same thing the East India Company did for 250 years, building local forces. About 5% were expats. the um, the The rest of them were locals. But by having the continuity with professionals, that provide leadership, intelligence, communications, medical, logistics expertise attached to them. It's like uh, it's like giving uh, a big brother training wheel support to those units. And there was like 90-some battalions that we're going to attach to. Uh, so there would have been about 3,600. And then there was about 90 aircraft we would have bought, brought. We already had a lot there. Or... Um, uh, or just taken over the Afghan aircraft, but fly them effectively. The U.S. makes the mistake that we they built the Afghan army in the mirror image of the U.S. military, 
heavily dependent on contractor support, heavily dependent on high-end laser-guided bombs and all the other stuff, really forgetting how the Afghans wage war and doing the basics of logistics. So we're going to support the Afghan troops effectively. People love... People love to say, people love veterans, but they hate contractors. But really, in this case, it was the same thing. Just a soft guy going back to serve again with reliable air power that would show up. And then you take away the real source of corruption in the Afghan forces was the fuel, the payroll, the munitions, food. Uh, And you basically take some, put an accounting firm in charge of that, take that away from the Afghans. And we could have done, we could have saved about 95% of what the U.S. was spending, I mean, meaning our, our, our program cost less than 5%. And uh, there was a big policy meeting in, at Camp David the summer of 2017. I was supposed to go as a backseat to the agency, and I was blocked by Mattis. And, um, and by Mattis? Master. Yeah. Mattis was a five-star, basically it was a five-star general as a sec def, as conventional as the day is long. And, and the sad thing is, for all that money and all those flags, nobody has been held account for wasting blood and treasure in Afghanistan, and it's disgusting. Those who, guys, who should be those guys, accountable? those guys all have board seats, they all have their full pensions, and they lost. They lost us. They lost the taxpayers, hundreds of billions of dollars, and we and we just pissed away a lot of great Americans in an effort that. Uh, was was unnecessarily wasteful. Eric, how many how much of your two billion dollar contract you got was for Afghanistan? Mm, probably a third. A third of it was from Afghanistan. You guys was six hundred plus million dollars of it. Okay, so so let me ask this. You know, for me, um, in the last and, whatever, and, and the biggest parts of those would have been building the Afghan border police, building the Afghan narcotics interdiction unit. Um, we did a lot of aviation support, flying supplies to uh, all the remote bases of the U.S. guys, and then some of it was for diplomatic security. Do you think, you know, the last few years, lowest trust the U.S. population has in the uh, politicians as well as mainstream media? They just don't trust them, right? Why and would even, they? You can't blame them. Then you got CIA, FBI, lowest it's ever been in a long time. Do you think we need those organizations? And if you had it your way, if you had the influence, would you have the military be set up the way it is right now? Would you have 50 PMCs compete against each other to provide the best service for the, uh, for the U.S. government? I think one of the best roles that a PMC could do, here's the thing. We have a post office. Mm-hmm. That's a federal government activity. Sure. You have FedEx. Mm-hmm. You can drop off a FedEx package. In some cases, you can pick up at a, at a post office. But the difference is FedEx operates as a private sector benchmark. It, because, you know, Fred Smith wrote the paper proposing FedEx, I think, while he was at Harvard. And they said, that's a terrible idea, and they gave him a C. Yeah, well, hold my beer. He that's does right. it. Yep. And, and now FedEx serves as a benchmark, and it's definitely made the post office wake up and be more efficient. Maybe not perfect yet. But it's definitely better than it was. And that's the best role that the private sector can be is to provide competitive um, pricing reality checks on, on what some of these things should be. You didn't answer the question. So do you think – I'm should, asking – No. Should it, should it all be PMCs? No, absolutely not. But there's a lot of functions that the government does that can be bid out and let the government bid to do that or let the private sector. I remember in like 2005, the Bush administration – was um, they were talking about hiring 2,000 or 5,000 more Border Patrol agents. Mm-hmm. And we got called to testify as to how much it would cost to train those. And CBP, Customs and Border Police, were saying it was going to be like $180,000 to train each Border Patrol agent. And we got called. We looked at the, at the curriculum to say, eh, we can do that for about forty. And so we were not very popular with CBP <laughs> because we could, we, and no shit, we knew our costs. We could do it for a quarter of what they were. Who, who, uh, who should the American people trust more to do the work better, PMCs or the U.S. government? Like if, if I'm, again, because the, the, the government has lost a lot of credibility last few years, right? Who, who should they trust more? You guys, PMCs first, first or of all, First of all, we sh- as a country, we should just spend less. 
Our government will suck less if it's smaller. We spend too much in social programs. We spend uh, way too much in military spending. We don't have the money. I mean, we're 34 trillion in debt. Sure. We have grave sure. danger of our currency collapsing. Putting the military, putting all the agencies on a severe diet is a very healthy thing because it will force people to to start to think outside the box to say, this is the mission I still got to get done. I don't have this this billion dollar fire hose to throw money at problems. Um, it, anytime a business goes into crisis, right? When it goes into a bankruptcy and you have a bankruptcy trustee and they come in and they, they force people to realign their thinking, that's it. Oftentimes it's very healthy for a business. We need to do that to all aspects of our government. So I'm not trying to avoid your question, but, but competitive reality check benchmarking is absolutely necessary to, to really make our military spend less. I mean, remember, in defense spending, we spend more than the next 17 countries combined. That's insane. That's, that's grotesque, and we're not that good at it. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.